Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through some intermediate to advanced compositing techniques inside of After Effects. This is perfect for anybody who already has some familiarity with After Effects, kind of knows the basics, but is ready to level up their skill set. We're going to be making this explosion shot, compositing visual effects elements from footagecrate.com. We're gonna to touch on things like color management, linear working space, emissive effects, and getting believable results. Those elements that you often see missing in amateur or beginner videos. I'm excited to share that with you. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna pick an explosion based on my scene's exposure and setting. Here I have a day and night ultimate explosion from footagecrate.com. What I'm looking for is to match the intensity of my fire to the intensity of the sky or the brightness in my shot. So I'm gonna be using this night explosion. Since I'll be dealing with exposure and color a lot in this project, I'm gonna change my project settings to give me the most control. Learning color management is key to improving your VFX shots, so definitely take the time to learn it. Now, that being said, color management is kind of a weird, sticky subject. We wanna get really into it, so we wanna do a color management and ACES tutorial course down the line. If that's something you're interested in watching, let us know below. All right, let's get back. I'll give you a brief overview. Go to Color Management and select OCIO Color Managed and change the bit depth to 32 bits. I'll be working in ACES CG. A linear workflow like this allows me to preserve the detail and give me much more realistic results when it comes to my lighting. Try to get in the habit of this workflow by using it on your next project. By changing this setting, it's gonna affect my clip's appearance. To fix this, I'll go to my project library and change the color interpretation for each of the clips in my scene. To do this, I can just right click on one of my clips and select interpret footage, main, select color, override media color space, and select output, output sRGB. This is because the footage I am working with is encoded in a display color format. Your footage may have been shot or exported in a different color space, but sRGB is the most common and what all assets from footagecrate.com are formatted in. To quickly apply this color interpretation to multiple clips, go back to interpret footage, but this time select remember interpretation, or you can just hit control alt C, select the remaining clips that need changing, and then right click and select apply interpretation or hit control alt V. If you wanna learn more about working with ACES and color management workflows, check out Inlight VFX's video on how to use ACES in After Effects or let us know in the comments below. Next, we want to rotoscope our actor. And while I absolutely hate the process of rotoscoping, it is absolutely essential for compositing. And for a scene like this, we're gonna have an explosion bleeding around the edges of our subject. So we have to be very, very detailed and careful when it comes to rotoscoping those fine edge details. If you haven't rotoscoped before, there are tons of rotoscoping tutorials out there. We are using the Roto Brush 2.0 tool inside of After Effects. Next, I can go back to my footage to 3D track the scene. Once the 3D tracking is done, I can apply the tracked camera to my scene and select the 3D toggle on the explosion layer. This will automatically track my explosion into my scene. Since the camera isn't really moving forwards or backwards, I don't need to worry too much about my explosion in 3D space. It's really more of a 2D track. The camera is moving a lot, so I want to make sure to enable motion blur on my explosion layer, so I could just toggle this motion blur switch. Make sure to also have the motion blur enabled for your entire composition. Quick note, you can always disable the motion blur toggle for your entire composition if you find that After Effects is running slowly, and then you can always re-enable the motion blur tab later on when you're ready for export. I'm going to use my actor's reaction and the camera shakes to choose when to place my explosion. Good VFX always needs some type of motivation and this is gonna help them sit way more realistically into the scene. This explosion up front is looking a little flat to me. It's lacking the perspective we would have if it was this close to camera. So to fix that, I'm gonna just apply a mesh warp effect. I could set it to just column so that I could just subtly round the bottom of my explosion here, faking that perspective. Now I'm gonna separate the smoke and fire elements from that explosion to have way more control. I'll start by isolating the fire elements. First, I can just pre-compose my explosion layer into a new composition and I'll call that comp fire. I'll also copy and paste the 3D track camera so I can see the motion of the explosion as it would sit in the scene. Then I'll just pre-compose that camera and that explosion layer together and I'll name that effects. In the library tab, I can just duplicate the fire comp and I'll title this one smoke. 
I'll come back to this comp later. In the fire comp, I'll add a key light on the layer called effects and extract the orange. Then I can create a duplicate of the effects layer underneath the original layer. From here, I'll just clear the key light and any other effects on the bottom layer and add a track mat to the top effects layer that has the key applied and invert it to extract just the fire. You may have to watch that one back to get all those steps. I am seeing a little bit of this outline on the fire. To fix this, I'll just add a solid composite effect and change it to black, and I'll add that above the key light effect to get rid of it. From here, I can increase my screen gain to preserve some of the glow. In my smoke comp, I can add a hue and saturation to my effects layer. I'll set the channel controls to reds, turn the lightness all the way down, and expand the channel range since some of the fire is still visible in my smoke. I have some white bits here, but don't worry about those. In my main explosion composition, I can see the isolated fire layer. Underneath it, I'm going to add the smoke composition. So now my effects look the same as they did before, which I know is a little bit of a letdown, but I have way more control over the fire's exposure. Before I get to the fire, I'm going to color correct the smoke, so I'm just going to hide my fire layer in the main composition. I only need to focus on the darker smoke since the lighter parts will be covered by my fire element. I'll use exposure and curves until my smoke roughly matches my footage. There are some technical approaches to this, but we have covered them in other compositing tutorials. Next, I'll work on the fire. I'll just turn on that fire layer and hop into my fire composition. From here, I can add an adjustment layer with a solid composite set to black and a tint. This is so that the brightness will represent the temperature of my explosion in my main comp. I'll change the transfer mode to add to get rid of the black in my fire layer. To color the fire, I'll add an exposure effect to match my scene's highlights and a photo filter effect with custom color and the density turned all the way up. Now I can just pick any color for my explosion. I'm just making sure to pick one that is not 100% saturated. An explosion is really, really bright, so of course it's gonna be casting illumination into my scene. To do this, I have to copy my footage layer into my fire composition. If I create feather masks on the footage layer in this composition, it's going to create glows in my main comp that match the fire colors. Make sure your footage layer is placed underneath the adjustment layer so the colors look correct. I'm gonna copy the footage layer in my main comp and paste it in my fire comp. Then I'll pre-compose the footage layer and label it Explosion 1 Illumination. I'll also copy and paste the 3D camera track into this new comp and add a new red solid that is large enough to fill all sides of the frame as it shakes. I'm doing this to create an illumination map that will control the brightness of the illuminated surfaces in the scene. I'll start by masking the closest pillar and rename the solid illumination near. Next, I'll duplicate the solid and redraw new masks for the partially illuminated elements that are further from the explosion. I'll name this layer Illumination Medium and make the solid color slightly darker. I'll repeat the process one last time for the furthest objects that are being illuminated by the explosion, and I'll make sure to make the solid color even darker. When I add a black solid beneath these solid layers, this essentially creates a depth map of the environment that controls the illumination. For the ground, I'm gonna create a new solid and make it white, which I'll make 3D and give it a grid texture. Then I'll align the solid to be flat with the ground and center it where the explosion takes place. Take advantage of vanishing lines in the scene to match the solid with the floor angle. If you're not sure what vanishing lines are, there are tons of videos on YouTube covering vanishing points and horizon lines and all that stuff. On the new ground plane, I'm gonna create a feathered mask around the base of the explosion. Then I'm gonna create a second, wider, more feathered out mask on top of that. If the floor plane crosses over the mask, you can just create an adjustment layer and put it between the masks and the floor plane. If I just enable the black solid behind these solid layers and then go to the fire comp and move the illumination layer to the bottom, the explosion now illuminates the area. However, the smoke here should not be illuminated, so I'll just drag the smoke comp into my fire comp above the illumination layer and tint it black. Back in the main comp, the scene is being illuminated very brightly. Some of the masks need to be layered in the correct order. Now I can control the illumination by adjusting the opacity of the illumination layer in my fire comp. 
Right now, the illumination looks flat. To fix this, I'll copy the footage layer from the main comp and paste it into the fire comp above the illumination layer. Then I can set the track mat to my footage and set the mode to luminance. Now the texture of the footage is influencing the brightness of the illumination. If the surfaces are disproportionately lit, I can adjust the mask opacity in the illumination comp or adjust the mask shapes to better fit the scene. I can create hotspots and highlight details by adding the curves effect to the footage layer in the fire comp. Now I can animate the scene's illumination intensity to match the explosion. In the fire comp, I'll lower the opacity of the illumination layer to zero and add a keyframe just before the effect. And then I can increase the opacity in the first frame of the explosion and add a final zero opacity keyframe as the effect fades out. For the second explosion, I'm duplicating the illumination composition and renaming it Explosion 2 Illumination. In this composition, I'll adjust the values and positions of the surface masks. After I finish this, I'm just going to drag the second illumination comp into the fire comp and drag it to the very bottom of the stack. Once again, I'll set the track mat to my footage and I'll set the mode to luminance. Here, I'll animate the opacity on the second explosion, just like I did for the first one. Depending on the scene environment, it's good to add ground reflections for more realistic light. However, this is a complex process that involves creating a new comp with a flipped explosion and compound blurs with gradient maps and more 3D tracking. We actually hate this process, so we decided to start working on a plugin to help us with reflections. So stay tuned for that when it's ready. Red Giant also has a nice reflections plugin that you can check out. So far, I have illuminated my scene, but I still haven't illuminated my actor. The best way to do this is with a light wrap, and we actually do have a free light wrap plugin for After Effects. I'll use the light wrap plugin on my roto layer in my main composition. I can just set the background layer to the fire layer and set it to effects and masks to retain the color. And then I could just blur the background to soften up some of those details. I'll set the blend mode to add and under linear workflow, I'll uncheck the auto detect gamma. Next, I'll increase the luminance bias amount so that I can get the detail back inside of the clothing. From here, I'll increase the exposure and lower the wrap width so that it's primarily illuminating the edges. Now the arm is also being illuminated by the explosion pretty well. It's very, very easy to overdo it with light wrap, so I suggest getting it to where you think it looks good and then decreasing it by about 50%. There are so many ways to add glows in After Effects. We actually have a free glow script available on our website. But for this project, I'll use the Crates Easy Glow plugin available in LaForge. In order to get the glow in front of my actor, I'm gonna go into the Fire Comp and just import the Roto Comp and apply a black tint to it. Back in the main composition, I could put the fire layer at the top of the stack. So now I have a glow everywhere. I'll mess with the tone mapping of the explosion. I'm setting it to 100, enabling linear and decreasing the intensity. If we watch our footage playback, we'll see that it does have this rack focus, meaning that as parts of the shot get blurry or out of focus, so should the VFX. Again, this is one thing that amateur or beginner compositors often miss. Even if something gets very slightly out of focus, make sure your VFX match it. The human eye is very good at picking up on those discrepancies. I'll use these bokeh highlights as a reference in order to match the blur onto our VFX. In my main composition, I'll add a camera lens blur to my fire layer and I could just increase the blur radius to round out the specular highlights of the effect. I'll adjust the blur radius every few frames to match the focus of the footage. I'm also just gonna apply the camera lens blur effect to my smoke layer by copy and pasting the blur and matching the effect keyframes. There are so many ground destruction assets available on footagecrate.com. I'm gonna use one of these free floating rock effects because I really like the explosive motion they have at the end. To add the debris to my explosion, I'll drop the effect into the effects comp. Then I'll just match up the debris exploding motion with where our explosion starts. I'll just make the debris a 3D layer and move it in front of the explosion effect. And I'll use a curves effect to correct the color of the debris to help it sit in the scene. I want the debris to be illuminated by the second explosion, so I'll just duplicate the effect and add a levels effect to add contrast. 
and use the curves effect to add some fire color. Then I'll just apply an add transfer mode and animate the opacity of the layer to match the explosion. And I won't forget to add the same camera lens blur that I added to the explosions. I'll just repeat the exact same thing for the second explosion. Next, I'll just add some grenade animations from footagecrate.com so we know where those explosions are coming from. For those, all I need to do is tweak the colors and the position and it's done. If you want to find any of those VFX assets for yourself, check the description below. We're going to post links to all of the effects that we used. We want to make more of these advanced compositing tutorials inside of After Effects. If that's something you're interested in seeing, let us know in the comments below. That's it for today. Remember to make it awesome.